In this video I'll show various ways in which to combine PHP code with ordinary HTML, which is what we do in nearly every PHP script. In Windows Explorer go to C XAMP HD Docs and alongside the favourite movies folder, not in it, make a new folder called PHP Demos. And inside PHP Demos, make a new text file and name it PHP and HTML.php. If a file has any PHP code in it at all, it must end in a .php extension to tell the server that it is a PHP file. Using this file, I'll demonstrate how to combine PHP, which will produce dynamic content, with ordinary HTML, which gives the static content, the framework of the web page. As always, you can find the completed version in the working files. Open up PHP and HTML .php in Komodo Edit and type in opening and closing PHP tags like this. All PHP commands have to go inside these tags to separate them from the ordinary HTML. Inside the PHP tags, type in exactly what you see on the screen echo, and then a space, date, and then parentheses, and then inside the parentheses, single quotes, and inside the quotes, lowercase l, and finish the line off with a semicolon. PHP commands generally have to end with a semicolon. It's a bit like a full stop at the end of an English sentence, and it tells the server the statement's finished, otherwise it'll run on to the next line and that'll be rubbish. Echo is like a print command, it prints whatever follows it to the browser screen. The date command here is followed by one parameter, lowercase l, which tells the server to return the current day in its full form. So Monday, the word Monday, or whatever. Now, Open up the file in your browser at the address http colon forward slash forward slash localhost forward slash php demos forward slash php and html dot php. You must use this localhost address as the URL from now on. Opening PHP files by right clicking on them in Windows Explorer and selecting a browser will not work, as you will not be opening them using the PHP server. Now, in the browser, you should see the name of the day. Then, on the next line, enter echo, and then inside double quotes, the HTML line break tag, BR. And don't forget the semicolon at the end. And then add below that line, echo, date, and then inside the parentheses, and the single quotes, uppercase H, colon, lowercase i, colon, lowercase s. This echoes or prints the hour in 24 hour clock format. That's the capital H, followed by a colon, followed by minutes, that's the lowercase i, another colon, and then seconds, and that's the lowercase s. The colons are just there for formatting, just so that it formats it in a normal time format. Refresh the page in your browser, and you should see the time, and if you keep refreshing it, you'll see the seconds changing. So this is our first step into displaying dynamic data drawn from the server. By the way, if the time's wrong, maybe several hours wrong, it's probably because you didn't do the lesson on changing your time zone earlier. After that, echo another BR tag in the same way as before. And then on the next line, echo date, and then lowercase d, uppercase m, uppercase y with spaces between the parameters, and semicolon at the end. This will add the date in day, month, year order, with a space between each. Instead of echoing these various date and time values out on their own like this, it's much more likely that we want to combine them with HTML, with some text saying, for instance, today is, and then the name of the day. To do this, instead of echoing the various date functions straight out, it would be much neater to store each of them as a variable first, and then echo the values of these variables out, combining them with HTML to give them formatting in any surrounding text we need. I'll do this now, demonstrating how bits of PHP code are interspersed with ordinary HTML. So change echo and then date L to dollar day equals date l 
Go back to the browser and refresh the page, and now the program no longer prints out the data to the screen. Instead, it silently saved it as a variable with the name $Day. Variables are a way of storing a value by assigning a name to it. This allows a value to be identified for reuse throughout the program, and it means it can be manipulated. We can work on it, we can do mathematical operations on it, we can change it later. Contents of a variable can be numbers, text, dates, and time, many things, or a whole list of values, in which case the variable is called an array. We'll look at arrays a bit later. In PHP, not in all programming languages, but in PHP, all variable names begin with a dollar sign, and they're case sensitive. So, for instance, dollar day with lowercase letters and dollar day with uppercase d are totally different variables. They're not related to each other at all. In PHP, it's best to assume that everything is case sensitive and make sure that you type everything in exactly as it's presented to you. Otherwise, little typos cause all sorts of trouble and they can be sometimes very hard to find. So be very careful with your typing. Now we'll rewrite the code storing all of these various date and time values as variables. Remove those br tags and by the end we should have date equals date d, dollar month equals date m, uppercase, dollar year, date uppercase y, dollar hours, date uppercase h, dollar minutes, bit cryptic, date lowercase i, and dollar seconds, date lowercase s. And delete the echo statement at the end. Now all these values are stored as variables, but nothing will be displayed in the browser, because we haven't done anything to display them. And now I can demonstrate the various ways of combining PHP and HTML as we display this data. We can use echo, as we did before, to print out one of the variables. Echo dollar day. And then enclose it in double quotes and add a pair of HTML tags either side. Inside the double quote marks. And then inside the double quotes, we can add in a label, for instance, or a bit of text, for instance, today is. So it'd be p tags on either side, then the string today is, and then dollar day. Try removing the double quotes, and you'll find it no longer works, and you get a syntax error. This is because this is complete nonsense to the server. If we want to combine HTML and PHP in an echo statement like this, we must enclose it in double quotes. Now try putting single quotes where we have the double quotes. This is interesting. You no longer get a syntax error but now you get the name of the variable dollar day printed out to the screen instead of its value which is probably what we want in php as in many other programming languages single quotes prevent their contents being interpreted instead we get the literal contents of the single quotes printed out verbatim so if it says dollar day dollar day is what we will get put back the double quotes so that it works as we want it to that's one way to combine PHP output with HTML, to wrap the output of an echo statement containing HTML tags and a variable, all in double quotes. Another way is to reverse the order of things and enclose the PHP inside ordinary HTML, the HTML tags. So after the closing PHP tag, now we're outside that and we're ordinary HTML, start typing, the HTML tags P, and then today is, and then inside that we'll embed our little bit of PHP script. 
starting with PHP tags, and then the echo statement, echo dollar day, then the semicolon, and then close off the PHP tag. And then we're back to the ordinary HTML, and we just close the P tag. Take a look now at the source code in the browser by right-clicking and choosing Source or View Source, and you will find there is no PHP code there at all, only ordinary HTML. This is because PHP is a server-side language. All the work interpreting it is done by the server, and the browser never sees any PHP code at all. This makes PHP very suitable for applications where security is needed, because if it's written and configured properly, there should be no way for a user to find out how the application works or discover any secrets like usernames and passwords. We've seen two ways of combining PHP and HTML. A third way is to use concatenation, or joining strings together. In PHP, concatenation is performed with a dot operator. Quotes, could be single or double according to our needs, according to what's within them, surround the parts which are ordinary HTML, and these are concatenated onto the dynamic PHP bits using a dot. So the string variable output that we've just made, with today is and dollar day all inside double quote marks, could be rewritten. We could say echo, and then start our string with its double quotes, open the p tag, today is, space, then the concatenating dot, then outside the double quotes, the string, then we have the variable, then another concatenating dot, double quotes, close off the p tag, and of course the semicolon at the end. And the result in the browser is going to be exactly the same. We must use this concatenation method if we want to perform any operations on variables. Assign the value of 5 to the variable $x, using $x equals 5. Echo, and then double quotes in closing, 5 plus 1 is $x plus 1, will not work. The mathematical operation is not performed, and all we get in the browser is 5 plus 1 is 5 plus 1. We have to concatenate the dynamic bit, the PHP bit, and keep it outside the double quotes. So echo, and then quotes, 5 plus 1 is, and then the concatenation dot, and then inside parentheses, $x plus 1, performs the operation, and echoes the result we want. Here's a bit of homework for you to practice concatenating strings and variables in this way. Using whichever of these methods you prefer, or any combination of them, try to echo the following message. The date today is, and then using the date function, your day. In my case, it's Monday the 3rd of June, 2013. Full stop. This time next year, it will be, and then, 3rd of June, 2014 and include the full stops at the end of the two sentences. You need the suffix, the ordinal suffix, usually TH, but ST for first and ND for second, RD for third. We get this automatically using the parameter uppercase S in the PHP date function. So do your best, see if you can echo out those two sentences, and the answer is in the working files. The date function is obviously a very important one, but it's not used in our favourite movies project at all. So in case you want to know more about the various rather cryptic parameters it takes, I've included a file in PHP demos called dateandtime.php, and in the bookmarks there's also a link to the relevant page at php.net. So far, we've used quote marks to output PHP and HTML, but what happens if quote marks themselves are part of what we want to display, part of our output string? We'll look at this in the next lesson.